All right, so now we're going to do an example of aliasing and fractional factorials. If you haven't watched the first two lectures, I highly suggest you do that so you know what we're talking about. Uh, the lecture before this actually goes over the definitions that we're using in this particular lecture. Um, we're not going to do the analytical part of it where we actually do the math in R. We're actually just going to walk through how the design choice of a design generator um, creates your design words. And then you recreate your design, your defining relationship, and also how we can see that identity column, right? So that we can make our aliasing relationship. So we're going to walk through a pretty big one just to show you how this kind of impacts everything. All right, let's get started. So this is aliasing in fractional factorials, an example. And the last lecture we're going to do probably in a couple days will be the actual how we walk through one in R. But this is just going through it by hand. So we're going to use an example. In this example, I'm going to talk about C CV joints on a front wheel drive, and due to an ozone attack in the elastometer of the boot can result in a failure. The critical factors that we've decided to be are these are these seven factors. And so these are basically a seven factors. And we're also going to choose three-way interactions between, we're going to try to generate these. So I'm going to generate these because I don't want to run a 2-7 experiment. I want to run a 2-7, three generations, right? So th generate three, and that's where that three is going to come from, All right? So I'm going to create aliases for three of them. And I'm just, because I know that these three-way interactions, A, B, C, B, C, D, and A, B, D are not going to be important. So I'm actually going to set E, F, and G to those values and alias them with it. All right, so we're going to come out and see how that works. So how many runs would be required for each replicate for a full fractional factorial design? Well, that would be two levels, because that's what we all talk about. And there were seven factors, and this is a full factorial design so I'm not going to alias anything so that's just 2 to the 7th right so 2 to the 7th that's going to I'm just going to double check that on my calculator that's going to equal 128 runs right that's going to for each replicate And remember, I have to do at least one rep two replicates to make it even worthwhile doing, right? So I've got 128 different combinations. Combinations of seven factors at two levels each. And we're like, no way, that's going to be too much. I don't want to do that. So I want to drive in a fractional factorial. That's just too expensive. So what type of fractional factorial design is needed to run to reduce this down to 16? So we're going to go from the 128 we had before. We want to go, we really only have some money for 16. For example, we might have only the money to do, to run 16 different ones. Well, I set my 2KQ is equal to 16. I know what my K is. My K is 7. I want to test 7 factors. So I need to solve for Q. Take the log of base 2 of both sides. 7 minus Q is equal to 4. So Q equals 3. So I'm going to need 3 generators. And then I use it. I use the, the on the last letters in the set. And this is going to be called a 2, 7, 3, an 8th fraction factorial right because basically 16 over 128 is 1 8 right so that's the whole idea right so this is the actual name of the experiment notice this is not the same so this is 237 it is not the same as a 2 4 experiment a 2-4 experiment is checking every combination of four factors. This one's checking an eighth of the combinations of a seven-factor experiment, right? So that's a big, big difference, right? So don't simplify that. That that 2 to 7 minus 3 means something different than just 2 to the fourth. They have the same number of runs per replicate, but it's a completely different kind of experiment. 
So what's the defining relationship? Okay, so this is where it gets ugly. So I start off by multiplying each generator by itself to get the first full set. So I know that E was equal to ABC, right? My generators were A is going to be equal to ABC, F is going to equal to BCD, and G is going to equal ABD. So I multiply both sides by themselves to find the, the, to find the different I's. So I've got these three I's. Then I'm just going to reorder. Then, remember, I times I is equal to I. So I have to multiply each defining word by the other. So I'm just going to highlight these so that you can see where they're at in different colors. Make it a little easier to see. So I do the red one times the green one. And I do the red one times the blue one. And I do the green one times the blue one. Right, so I define by each one of those by the others. So again, let's just re do, redo that real quick. So this is the red one, the red one, the red one. The blue one is the blue one. And the green one. So we got red times green, red times green. Then remember also I times I times I equals I. And this one is I times I. And these ones are just I. So I need to highlight over the red one, the blue one, and the green one. Oh, the green one. All have to be multiplied by together. So I have, at the end of the day, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different defining words right, for this experiment. Now remember the defining words are those words where those sets of combinations are equal to one or those interactions are not being tested in the experiment. So what's the defining relationship? This is where it gets ugly. So we're going to combine and clean up the mess. So this is just from the last one before. So again, This was our red one, our blue one, and our green one. Now I'm combining, right? I'm putting all the letters together. And then anytime I see a square, I can drop it out. Because those are just I. So any squares or cubes, the, now, the, now the third power ones I have to leave alone. Then I simplify. So again, I'll see, this is the red one I was talking about. This is the blue one. This is the green one. This one simplified to become ADF. This one simplified down to be CDG. This one simplified down to be ACFG. And it's really just this big, huge alphabet soup. And this big monstrosity Oh, forgot to take out that one. Became this one. Right away, I see the B cubed. I can just move that to a B. I don't have to leave that on there. B cubed is the same as B, right? Because B cubed is B times I, which is just B. Right? That's why it always works out that way. So, this is the defining word. Those are all... So, all these four-way interactions... These four way in interactions are not tested. They are always plus. Right? So they don't ever get tested because they're never in the, they're never in a different situation. Right? So all those four way interactions are that way. So if we have an example question where we say, now, what do we want to know? What interactions are aliased with the mean antioxidant level effect C? So the antioxidant level is actually C. To find the aliases, we multiply by the defining relationship. So here's the defining relationship from before. All right. And then all I do is multiply every term by C. So notice I see, no pun intended, 
C C C C C C C C. Then I go through and then I clean things up. Every time I see a square, I get rid of it. So, and then at the end of the day, this is what C is. So all these are all these interactions, all these interactions are always set at same plus minus level as C. Right, so I don't know the difference between these. So if I assume that C is important, I've got to assume that all the rest of these are not important. Otherwise, if they are important at all, they're gonna jam up my experiment because their effects are gonna get lumped in with C, which is exactly what I don't wanna do, right? So that's the typical idea for this aliasing idea. So again, walk through the example. You have this idea where I'm gonna to try to shrink it down I'm going to build my generator. So my design decision. This is my, this is my decision. This is my design decision. Now I can choose different versions of this, but I need to walk myself through this. How I'm going to do it? What a lot of people tend to do is they forget to they get to this first one, but they forget to do this one. This one gets forgotten a lot. You got to find the other one and multiply it together. Then you just clean up the alphabet soup, right? So it's just kind of going through and cleaning up all everything else. Then you're left with your overall defining word, which you then can use for figuring out aliases again. And so I'm just going to walk you through one more, just to kind of show you how this works as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this page out. That's defining word again, and I'm going to go ahead and add it to a new page. And so I'm going to show you again another way, another example on how this works. So instead of just doing C, I want to say, what are the aliases, aliases of, let's say, maybe CD interaction, right? If I want to know what the aliases of CD interaction are, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by CD. So I just write over the top. Then I go through and I cancel out anything that's the same. So there's two C's there. There's a C and a D there. There's a D there. There's a D there. A C and a D. A C. And nothing. Then I just write out what's left. So I got C, D. I've got A, B, D, E. Clean that up. Next one over, I've got B, F. Then I have A, B, C, G. Then I have A, C, E, F. Then I have E, G. I have A, D, F, G. And I have the big ugly B, C, D, E, F, G. So, C, D is aliased with two two-way interactions, B, F, and E, G. So these all, all these kiddos, all these guys are sitting in the same bus seat, right? They always have, they all go up, they're all up or down together. So I've got to be careful, are all, is one important, but none of the other ones are, right? And it's got, and everybody in this bus seat is made up of a bus seat with three two-way interactions no three-way interactions, but one, two, three, four, four-way interactions and a big, ugly six-way interaction are all sitting on the same bus seat together, right? So we've got to be careful that that's, we really, really want to make sure that only one of these really matters. If one of these, if more than one of these matters, you got to do a different design because you picked the wrong generators or this may not be able to separate the result that you want, right? And so we're going to do an example in R in the next lecture, which I'll be posting up in another day or so. All right. Hopefully that kind of gets you started on things. You can actually start doing some more of the homework. And if you have any questions, as always, just talk during session. Thanks. Bye-bye.